one question I have asked myself about the new state of Israel is whether so small a country can ever survive without indefinite outside help. Remember, here's a country no bigger than Massachusetts. In some places, no more than six miles wide. The southern half, chiefly desert, surrounded by hostile neighbors. And entirely aside from the threat of war, the question is, can such a little country, such an isolated country, become self-supporting? I know that many people have asked the same question. And to answer it, during a trip to Israel, I interviewed scientists to see what they were doing and what could be done to make Israel self-supporting. I'd like to report to you what I found. I was surprised to find that the chairman of the Scientific Council was none other than Prime Minister Ben-Gurion, of whom I asked how it was that in addition to all his other duties, he found time to be president of this council. Well, I will tell you, Mr. Pearson, we believe that science is not merely the noblest intellectual occupation of men to discover the secrets of nature. It is also a growing factor in daily life, in security, in agriculture, in industry, in social relations. We in our country mostly need power and water, and we have to uh, develop all the available resources. We are trying, with the help of science, to dissolve seawater by cheap processes. We want to use solar energy, and we want to develop atomic energy. And we consider that making Israel a great center of science in the world is one of our main tasks for our own benefit and for the benefit of humanity. I doubt if any one state in the United States has concentrated so much on scientific experimentation as Israel. Sometimes I think we in this country forget that the men who brought atomic science to the United States were Jewish refugees from Hitler. And today, similar refugees are working in Israel, not only on atomic science, but teaching medical students and helping to aid and prolong human life. I watched both Arab and Jewish children receive care of some of the finest baby specialists in the world in the Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem, the most modern in the Near East. We have so many facilities for tuberculosis that we could even take... And here in the Tel Hashemer Hospital near Tel Aviv, Dr. Haim Shiba, director of the hospital, has spent 30 years studying tropical medicine. Dr. Shiba, I understand that uh, blindness is a terrible problem in the Near East. What have you been able to do about it here? We do transplantation of the cornea, which is a plastic repair, and uh, we use eyes from corpses, which we keep in a bank, like blood or bones. Have you been able to remedy very much blindness? I don't know figures exactly, but it comes well over 100 people who, in whom sight was restored Com from complete blindness. Complete blindness and they're completely... Yes. We have even a nurse here, and she can work and write and see the degrees on the thermometer. What about tuberculosis? Have you had much success with it? We had to begin with in 48 until 51 with large immigration. But uh, now it's well under control and we are even closing beds every year. Closing beds? Yes. How does Israel compare with other countries on tuberculosis? I would say very favorably. We are nearly equal with Denmark and other civilized countries as far as tuberculosis goes. But Dr. Sheba, do you take in Arab patients as well as Jewish patients? Certainly. We have a certain area which we service, and both Jews and Arabs come if they require hospitalization. Well, how do they get along? Very well. It depends on the medical staff, and uh, I'm convinced both feel that they get equal treatment. Is this having any effect on the... Arab population that they have come to get along better with the Jewish population? I hope so. I strongly believe that medical services are the best 
educated to loyalty of citizens generally. I went to the Government Agricultural Institute, where inside a glass cage I found scientists studying hybrid corn and new types of plants that could grow in the special soil and climate of the Near East. Here I interviewed Dr. Jacob Pellick, who's been trying to improve the breed of dairy cows and bring new plants to Israel. Dr. Pellick, I've seen a lot of sand dunes around here. Have you had any luck in growing anything on sand? We try to do something about it, especially we are trying to grow some plants as, as alfalfa and irrigate them with uh, water, and especially with sewage water. And uh, this experiment has been quite successful. We had quite nice crops. You've grown alfalfa really on sand? Just real you know, pure sand, sand dunes around uh, uh, Tel Aviv and uh, other thousand places. Well, Dr. Pellig, you know, I'm something of a dairy farmer back home, and I was just wondering what kind of cows you specialize in here in Israel. Uh, farmers in this country prefer to uh, keep Holsteins. They're doing very well and uh, giving high yields in milk production. Do you use uh, bulls or artificial insemination? We are using uh, about 90% of the cases we are using artificial insemination, which is a result of our research done here in this station. Are there any other countries around here that use artificial insemination? So far as I know, this is the only one country in this region which is using artificial insemination. In Upper Galilee, I found Professor G. Mayer surrounded by cages of flies. More flies than I've ever seen in captivity. I think the flies bite harder in the Near East than any place else in the world. And I asked Dr. Mayer about his new system of getting rid of them. Well, just we are trying to combine the sanitation practices and practices in proper disposal of manure and garbage together with the use of toxic substance in form of dust. Just how, uh, how does that operate? The uh, dust, I mean. Yes, you see, the people dust over the manure and the garbage before composting it. And then it mixes and it kills the, the maggots. So actually we work, we uh, attack the fly at the breeding source, not in the building. Well, have you made this practice available to the nearby Arab countries? They've got quite a fly problem too, I understand. Well, sir, we are uh, publishing our results and widely, and uh, we would be only happy if they would take up our methods and use it. One thing Israel has plenty of is hot sunshine. Dr. Zvi Tabor has made more progress harnessing the rays of the sun than any man in the world. Dr. Tabor, would you mind telling me how this works? Yes, well, this is a black plate, and uh, cold water enters at the bottom, travels along these tubes that run up the plate, and emerges as hot water as the result of the sunshine which is absorbed on the surface of the plate. Uh, the difference between this apparatus and other types of collector uh, is that because of the special treatment of the plate, uh, it uh, loses very little energy, and as a consequence, it's possible to get steam out of this apparatus, whereas previous collectors only provided hot water. You mean, you mean to say that you really get steam out of this, taken from the rays of the sun? Oh, yes. You can see that we uh, condense some of the steam in this bottle at the back of the apparatus. Well, now, how soon do you think you'll be able to put this to practical advantage? Well, uh, one of the applications we're just starting on now is for the cooling of houses in uh, hot areas. Uh, by making the roof in the form of a collector of this type, uh, we uh, can operate a air conditioning equipment which will cool the house. You mean to say you're going to cool a house with the hot rays of the sun? Yes, despite the fact that it sounds rather paradoxical, this is quite possible in the same way that you, uh, uh, with a gas refrigerator, you light the gas and you uh, cool the refrigerator. I see. Well, now, will you be able to use this to turn factory wheels also? Well, that's looking a bit further ahead, but it's certainly a goal that we have in mind. You don't know how soon you might be able to attain it? Well, I hope that within uh, quite a short period, uh, say half a year, we will be using uh, steam for some industrial purposes produced from the sun. If Israel, with her long sea coast, could ever turn salt water into fresh water, all her irrigation problems would be over. And the University of California has been attracted by the plan of a Russian refugee in Israel, Dr. Alexander Zarkin, to make fresh water cheaply. So I went to see Dr. Zarkin. Now, you know, back in the United States, I'm supposed to make predictions, but I'd like to ask you, Dr. Zarkin, if you could make a prediction as to how soon 
you can supply seawater and turn it into fresh water for irrigation here in Israel. Two to three years. Well, that is a wonderful prediction. How does that compare with the cost of purifying seawater on battleships? He says that it's uh, about uh, up to half a dollar. Two cents against uh, 50 cents, that's pretty good. To check further on the progress of science in Israel, I went out to Weizmann Institute, a beautiful place outside Tel Aviv, where I interviewed one of the outstanding young scientists, Dr. Amos D. Sholit. I had a very interesting conversation about Israel's development of nuclear energy. What are you doing about uh, nuclear power? Uh, Dr. Dostrovsky, with a group from his department here at this institute, was looking for uranium in the phosphates in the Negev, discovered it there, and then developed methods for the separation, for the cheap separation of uh, uranium from uh, phosphates. They also developed a method for the cheap separation of heavy water from ordinary water, which is very important for uh, nuclear energy. Now, one question. Uh, where were you educated, doctor? I studied for four years at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. I was born in Jerusalem. And uh, then I went to the United States, studied at MIT and, uh, in Princeton, where I had the privilege to meet Professor Einstein. As a matter of fact, I lived next door to him. Image of the old gentleman himself, a wonderful old man. Oh, yes, he certainly was a very nice man. Einstein, I might add, was never proud of his part in discovering at the atomic bomb. He was proud of the theory of relativity, and he would be proud today of the constructive program Israel is making through science, from new, modern housing to oil drilling, from field to factory, in a determination to make this new country, in an old land, self-supporting. Much of this inspired by the theories and foresight of Dr. Heim Weizmann, first president of Israel and founder of the Weizmann Institute. Thus, friends and relatives of refugees from Hitler who came to America to devise the atomic bomb and defeat Hitler, now are bending their genius toward constructive steps to develop their own homeland. And they hope, eventually, win the peace. <laughs>